Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering woke professors panic as DEI programs vanish from campuses nationwide. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. Coming from Yahoo, diversity programs vanishing from U.S. campuses amid culture wars. And coming from Reckon.News, how these nine states' anti-DEI laws will impact college campuses. DEI in colleges is starting to fade away. The latest battle in the culture wars cleaving American society centers around diversity programs on university campuses, now restricted or banned in a growing number of U.S. states. The debate pits those on the left who advocate for boosting minority students victimized by deep-rooted inequality and those on the right who say, no, people should be judged based on their individual merit, not their skin color. And not everybody was treated differently based on their skin color to begin with. Quote, the idea of present discrimination being the remedy for past discrimination is inherently wrong, said Jordan Pace, a Republican member of the House of Representatives in the state of South Carolina. We don't like the idea of judging people based on immutable characteristics whether it be gender or race or height or whatever, he said, calling the United States a hyper-meritocratic society. Often known as diversity, equity, and inclusion programs, many American universities had given special consideration to minority students, particularly those who are Black, Hispanic, and Native American, as they sought to correct long-standing inequalities. They also got special programs funded for them, special centers funded for them, scholarships, and additional benefits just based on skin color or ethnicity. Last June, however, the country's conservative majority Supreme Court put an end to affirmative action and university admissions, reversing one of the major gains of the civil rights movements of the 1960s. Now, Pace is urging his state to follow the lead of Florida and about a dozen other states that have scrapped campus DEI programs. Quote, the primary target group across the country are black people, said Ricky Jones, professor of Pan-African Studies at the University of Louisville in Kentucky. That's this guy. Carly Reeves, a student, was the first person in her family to attend college, and when she arrived at the University of Louisville, it was, quote, very obvious that my professors didn't really think that I belonged, didn't really see me as intelligent. Well, that's not up to the professors to figure out. That's up to how Carly Reeves presents herself to professors. Professors have seen thousands of students of every race and every gender and every situation. Professors are going to judge you based on how you present yourself to professors. In 99% of the cases, why? They have multiple ways of judging you. Do you show up on time? Do you pay attention in class? Do you ask good questions in class? All of these things get evaluated. It's how you present yourself that makes the difference. However, DEI leaders on campus spoke to Carly Reeves and they spoke life into her and told her, you have the merit. She may have the merit. She may not have the merit. She may have an issue with confidence because she's been deluded to think based on her race, just by the presence of quote DEI leaders, that her race should define her, not her level of confidence, her achievement, how hard she works, how she conducts herself in class which then will translate to how she'll behave when she leaves college and goes into the workplace. Many minority students are at the school, quote, 100% because of DEI, she said, raising as an example black students who benefited from race-based scholarships. Yep, race-based scholarships, payments directly to students based on their skin color. Of course we can't have that in the United States. That needs to stop. But on March 15th, Kentucky lawmakers advanced a proposal to restrict such programs, spurring Reeves to co-organize a protest on campus. Quote, it just felt like my duty to inform the students. Hey, y'all, these people are trying to literally get rid of us from campus. We have to do something, she said. No one is trying to get rid of Carly Reeves or anyone else from any of the campuses. You just can't ask the government to sponsor you in a certain way and pay for you in a certain way based on your skin color or your ethnicity or your sexual preference. It's wrong, and it's also not going to continue. Obviously, it's a ridiculous, trendy thing that got stuck into the culture because someone started this as a revolutionary movement. It's being stopped right now in multiple states. It's not going to continue. People should never think of their skin color first.
They should never want to be perceived as just a certain skin color. It's who you are and what you do that makes you what you are. Kentucky is following other conservative states, including Texas, Alabama, and Idaho. At the beginning of March, the University of Florida ended DEI programs and related jobs, part of Republican Governor Ron DeSantis' offensive against what he calls woke ideology. I'm extremely worried, said Stephanie Ann Shelton. That's this lady, a professor and director of diversity at University of Alabama's College of Education, while new provisions in her state's law allow her to teach certain diversity awareness courses to future educators. She's concerned about, quote, the degree to which concepts like academic freedom remain in place. In Alabama, it is now prohibited to compel a student to personally affirm, adopt, or adhere to a divisive concept, specifying that includes making an individual feel the need to apologize on the basis of his or her race. None of these laws should be necessary because people should have common sense. Not everybody has common sense. And sure, you want professors to have a certain level of academic freedom. You want them to teach based on their experience, based on what they believe, based on what they've learned over decades of being a professional educator. But when you mix ideology into it, when you mix your Marxist agenda into it, no, you don't have the permission to do it anymore. You're going to get stopped by the state. And as time goes on, you'll be stopped by the federal government. Failure to comply with Alabama's new law can result in dismissal, which is great because these people who teach these divisive concepts don't respect other people's ideas. They only want their ideas pushed, and if they can't respect them, they should be dismissed. Republicans routinely rail against critical race theory, an academic approach to studying ways in which racism infuses U.S. legal systems and institutions in often subtle ways. Why would Republicans be against that? Because the whole system of critical race theory, of course, is racist. It was supposed to be something taught in theory in law schools as a small segment of law schools. That's what we were told as a country, as a society. Now they push critical race theory in books like Anti-Racist Baby that go literally to the point where you're teaching a baby. And then K through 12 schools. And of course, in college. And then of course, forced diversity statements from students, from faculty, from employees at companies. It needs to stop. It went way too far. Republican White House candidate Donald Trump has called for making reforms on a federal level. Quote, on day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto our children. Trump said this recently at a rally in Ohio. Ricky Jones, the Louisville professor, said the new laws are, quote, a rolling back of the racial clock locally, statewide, and nationally. Going forward, black scholars will avoid states like Florida and Texas, he said, predicting a very, very dangerous forgetting that will happen here. I don't necessarily agree with Ricky Jones that black scholars are going to avoid states that treat everyone equally. I would think they would want to go places based on their merit and let people know that they're just as smart as anybody else of any other gender or any other skin color. They don't need Ricky Jones's help to make it through college. They can do it based on their own merit. And from Reckon, how these nine states' anti-DEI laws will impact college campuses. Restricting diversity, equity, and inclusion programs on college campuses is hot, so much so that 81 anti-DEI bills have been proposed since 2023. From Florida, whose anti-DEI bills expand on its Stop Woke Act to Alabama's new law prohibiting indoctrination of certain beliefs about race, class, gender, or sexuality, 11 of these bills throughout the country are now law, affecting higher learning institutions in nine states. Quote, DEI programs recruit and retain BIPOC, LGBT, and other underrepresented faculty and students to repair decades of discriminatory policies and practices that excluded them from higher education. According to a tally by the Chronicle of Higher Education, anti-DEI bills targeting college programs have been introduced in at least 28 states and in Congress since the start of 2023. Anti-DEI laws sweeping the country will largely impact all parts of how colleges and universities function, including faculty hiring and curriculum to on-campus student organizations and programs that will face restrictions or elimination if they focus on race, color, sex, national origin, gender identity, or sexual orientation. Most of that is if you're going to have a special program for only certain people of certain skin colors or certain sexual preferences, it can't be funded by government. That's what most of these laws say. So you can get them funded privately. 
You can fund them through the college in some other way, but you can't ask the government to pay for discriminatory programs. That's what the laws say. With new anti-DEI laws taking effect daily, Reckon has broken down how these nine states' anti-DEI legislation will impact colleges and universities. In Florida, while Florida signed two anti-DEI bills into law last May, public colleges and universities are now facing the effects of the legislation. The first law prohibits colleges and universities from requiring the completion of a political loyalty test or for persons to meet certain qualifications based on race or ethnicity. The legislation bars schools from asking current or would-be employees to state support for the idea that the nation's systems and institutions are racist, oppressive, or otherwise unjust. Shouldn't need a law to do that. People should have enough common sense not to insult people with that nonsense. In North Carolina, an anti-DEI bill took effect in December, targeting anti-bias training for state employees. The new law bans state agencies ranging from the prison system to public colleges and universities from asking employees or prospective hires to state their opinions or take any action regarding matters of contemporary political debate or social action. The bill was vetoed by North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper, a Democrat, who said the legislation attempts to eliminate training that can help us understand the unconscious bias we all bring to our work and our communities. But later, the North Carolina General Assembly overrode the governor's veto. Sorry, Governor. In Alabama, while Alabama introduced two anti-DEI bills, only one passed and went on to be signed into law by Governor Kate Ivey. In March, the state of Alabama enacted a no-indoctrination bill that would prohibit public colleges and universities from sponsoring any DEI programs defined as any program or participation is determined based on identity group. While this law has not taken effect, experts say it could ban recognition or funding for black student unions at public universities, including in Alabama's eight public HBCUs. In Tennessee, Tennessee enacted a bill last May that prohibits any public institution of higher education, local education agency, public charter school, the State Board of Education, and the Department of Education from requiring an educator, faculty member, or employee of a public institution of higher education to complete or participate in implicit bias training. While the new law hasn't taken effect yet, it will prohibit adverse licensure and employment actions from being taken against such an individual for the individual's failure or refusal to participate in implicit bias training. So if you weren't taking their stupid implicit bias training, they would withhold your license, your professional license to work or terminate you. Well, of course you need a law to prevent that. If people are actually doing that, you need a law to prevent that. In Texas, since 2022, Texas lawmakers have introduced seven anti-DEI bills, but only two so far have been signed into law. Passed as part of Texas's statewide 2024 to 2025 budget, one anti-DEI law bans colleges and universities from spending state-appropriated funds on DEI efforts, programs, and training that do not comply with sections of the state constitution regarding equality under the law based on characteristics such as sex and race. In 2023, Texas also enacted a bill that requires a public colleges and universities board of trustees to approve the hiring of top administrators as well as core courses and job postings. The board of trustees must also submit an annual report confirming the institution does not require diversity statements, have a DEI office, or any DEI employees. In Utah, Utah lawmakers tried to pass four anti-DEI bills between 2023 and 2024, only one was successful. The state's new law will take effect on July 1st, 2024, and requires all public colleges and universities, public K-12 schools, and any government institution with DEI programs in Utah to change their DEI programs to focus on general student success and support. The bill prohibits offices from engaging in different treatment or preferences based on race or gender, and prohibits colleges from requiring a student or employee to participate in training or developing offices that promote differential treatment based on a person's race, sex, color, ethnicity, sexual orientation, national origin, religion, or gender identity. In Indiana, Indiana's higher education bill passed into law on March 13, 2024, requiring the boards of trustees over public colleges and universities to establish policies where faculty members cannot receive tenure or promotions if they have not encouraged free expression and intellectual diversity, or teaches students political views unrelated to their discipline. The new bill amends an existing law by requiring public colleges and university boards diversity committees to make recommendations to promote recruitment and retention of underrepresented students 
with the word underrepresented replacing the word minority in current law. And in North Dakota, North Dakota enacted a specified concepts anti-DEI bill that went into effect last August. This new bill has banned mandatory diversity training and the use of diversity statements in hiring at public colleges and universities. The specified concepts anti-DEI bill also prevents higher learning institutions from asking about the ideological or political viewpoint of students, prospective employees, or those being considered for a promotion or tenure. It's incredible you would need a law to protect people from this, but you do. You need multiple laws. And in Wyoming, as part of a budget amendment this month, the state of Wyoming decided to stop state appropriations for any DEI program, activity, or function at the University of Wyoming. The budget will reduce the university's block grant by $1.73 million for its DEI office. That law goes into effect July 1, 2024. We see massive progress with DEI offices being defunded and being outlawed in state after state after state. What we need now is for the federal government to step up and say we will not have discrimination in colleges, universities, businesses, any government offices, or in any public or private schools. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another story. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.